So I've spent the last few YouTube videos going over watercolors and how to use them with mixed media projects, which means how do you use them with other products. So last time we did a the three techniques to use for using watercolor alone. So that was super helpful. That was the feedback I got anyways from you guys. And today I want to talk about when we use watercolor as the base layer, what different things that are we can put on top that are going to be safe, not screw up what we have going down on the watercolor layer and what is not safe. So to help myself keep track of all these layers, as well as members of my Mixed Media Society, I have compiled a list of mixed media projects created by other mixed media artists into this giant 32 page PDF. And it basically talks about what I call like the hot dog layer. So a mixed media hot dog, in my world is any mixed media project that has about four layers or fewer. And what's nice is that when you know exactly what these layers are and what works, and that's why this PDF is so nice, is that they've kind of figured it all out for you and they're just like, here's the answer sheet, here's all the layers that work, they're not gonna screw up your watercolors. So not all the projects in the Hot Dog PDF packet are watercolors, but a lot of them in do involve watercolors. And because watercolors are so reactive, you do have to be super careful about what you're putting underneath and on top. So if you want that PDF packet, let me know. I'll just drop your link and you can grab it. So um, I am just coming from my drawing channel where I've just drawn this um, witch. She was started off being a goddess, now she's a witch. So this is gonna be actually a full length lesson for my Celtic Collective students for October, cause October is witchy season, my friends. Um, and I'm gonna be using this, these Essence Watercolors by Prima. And my students, if you're watching this for really anybody, you don't need to buy this. You can just use whatever colors that you have. But I want to couple this. I'm gonna do watercolor as the base. And then I'm gonna be playing with mediums on top. Hence come in the hot dog layers. And as I go, um, I'm going to be filling in my hot dog worksheet. <laughs> worksheet? No, there's no sheep here. Worksheet. So I can keep track of and remember what works with my watercolors. And then I will add it to my PDF packet that I have going on. So if you want to watch how to draw this, um, I actually did a book review. What's actually nice about this video is I, I'm, I'm reviewing this book, which I do super highly recommend. If you've ever been curious about creating something that's in the anime or manga style, so you can watch that over on my drawing channel. Um, but let's get started. We're going to do watercolors, like I said, and then I'll be introducing some other materials on top. So stay tuned. You can watch and learn what works. And then I'll also let you know what doesn't as we go. Let's dive in. All right, so here's basically page two of the hot dog packet. And you can see it, it, the, the plate is the substrate, okay? So whatever is used as the base, paper canvas, wood art journal. So my plate is cold press watercolor paper. And I am working on, I'll put all the links in the description box for you. Um, and then the bun is the main ingredient. So in this case, watercolors is the bun because it's kind of the base and it's holding it all together. And then I will show you when I introduce the hot dog. So I'll just show you the watercolors that I'm using today. This video is not sponsored. These are my actual own personal watercolors by Prima that I purchased on Amazon. And I will put links to everything in the description box below for you. I just love these little sets. They're not like the best watercolors in the whole world, but their little collection of colors that they curate to put in their different sets, I find them super inspirational. And if you're kind of stuck or you're having like a creative block, it's just the thing to like pick up this little packet that someone has already picked out, all these colors that go together. This is the third set that I've reviewed recently and I just kind of love them to pieces. This is, I don't love this one to be honest as much as the last two two that I've reviewed, three, sorry, that I reviewed. Um, it's probably my least favorite because there seems to be sort of, well, first of all, that earth color is a little nausea, nauseous, nauseous looking. <laughs> 
and the gray doesn't do anything for me. And three of these colors come from the Complexion Skin Tone set, actually, which I thought was really interesting. But like the Nirvana is awesome, that, that green color. The Adore is this lovely like maroon. I do love the Awake is really pretty brown. The Eternity is a gorgeous blue. And that um, purple blue color they call Creation is lovely as well. So overall, like... It's, it's, it is nice. It's just not my favorite. The current, I think so far, the current, which is the blues and greens is still holding number one as far as I'm concerned. So I'm prepping my watercolor paper here with some frisket so that I can keep those stars and my moon and everything all nice bright white at the end of the day when I'm all done. It is kind of neat too that three of the colors are also in the complexion set. So like if you were going on a quick trip and you didn't have any room for any more like watercolors or art supplies, you could actually just stow this in your purse along with like a travel watercolor brush and you could do some skin tone. You could do light, medium and dark skin tones with just this one set plus some other colors for fun. So that I thought was pretty cool about this set as well. So part of her outfit that she's wearing is has these long sleeves and then there's like a big hood. She is a witch after all. So I used the dark color for the sort of inside fabric colors of all the parts of her amazing outfit. And that um, worked out super well as far as the watercolors were concerned. Again, you can tell it's not the, it's not like this premium, premium watercolor set. Um, I don't need to keep harping on that, but you do notice a difference. I've worked with Daniel Smith's for so long that when you downgrade a bit, it's like, oh, it's weird how you can kind of tell the difference. It just don't cover quite as well. Um, but the value of these is insane. They're so inexpensive for what you're getting. Like I cannot complain, but it did, it was a little bit of a bummer how sort of inconsistently, as you can see, it's kind of like streaky and, and is just not as awesome looking as uh, it would normally if it was like a high end watercolor product. So just something to be aware of. But again, the value is insane. Like it, there's such good deals. I, I'm not complaining. I just kind of powered on. Um, so yeah, I loved doing all the little watercolor bits and pieces for this part. Um, and then we're about to come, come do, oh, and before I switch gears and talk about the next step of the hot dog, I should explain in my last week's video, we did, I did a deep dive on wet on wet and wet on dry and dry brushing. And as you can see here, if you saw that video, this is wet on wet in action. This whole background is like the perfect example of a giant <laughs> wet on wet playground, my friends. So it's super, super fun. Um, my problem, my personal problem with watercolors is it's not strongly colored enough. Like I'm always left wanting a little bit more. That's just like, it doesn't match my personality, which is kind of like loud and obnoxious and strong as many people like to tell me, especially in my YouTube comments. I'm not for everyone. I know that. Um, so while I did this whole project initially in watercolors, I was balking at when it came to actually finishing her outfit. I was so underwhelmed, even though I love this color combination. I think it looks smashing together. I just, I'm always left like wanting more. And that's when I went to the next part of my hot dog mixed medium layering system. So I did the watercolors and normally I would switch to color pencils on top or, or watercolor markers or watercolor pencils or pan pastels. And I was like, nope, you know what? I need something strong, vibrant and opaque. And that's when I went to gouache. So how do I know if it's gouache is safe? Well, let me show you my hot dog packet. So as I flip through my hot dog packet at all the different combinations, Maggie, pay attention, Mags. At all the different combinations that people are suggesting and that projects that people have used and done, I was looking for the ones with the watercolor for more ideas. So there's so many projects in here, it's so fun. But there was one that I hit, and it's a project of someone who's very close to my heart because she actually co-directs the, where'd it go? She co-directs the Celtic Collective with me. Oh, here we go. Oh, right here. So watercolor and 
Oh, sorry. Was I, did I interrupt your nap? I'm so sorry, Maggie. <laughs> Watercolor and gouache. So I switched gears to gouache because I know from experience, but also from Lucy. Lucy Bryden taught me everything I have learned about gouache. Um, they go hand in hand. So as much as I've had a ton of watercolor, I know from Lucy's experience that you can use gouache and look at here's her explanation. So when I had when I sent this to all my art friends, I had them fill out and explain why. So she says these two supplies work naturally together and in the same way. The only difference being gouache is opaque and watercolors are transparent. So I was looking for something super opaque, super strong and bright. Right, Maggie? <laughs> and so that's what I ended up doing. So when I go to my hot dog, so my, oh, Maggie, you're a hot dog. Uh, we're going to put gouache here, and then uh, we'll get to the toppings in a minute. All right, so there are a few different kinds of gouache, but you can boil it down to two. One is traditional gouache, and that is what I'm using for this project, and it is acts exactly like watercolor and is as reactive, which is actually a bad thing when you're working with mixed media because anything wet that you put on top can actually disrupt all your bottom layers of gouache and watercolors. And that's why I went through that whole exercise of reaching out to my art friends and being like, hey, what do you use? What do you use Then you know that it works? So I know that these two work together, but again, you have to be careful about what goes on top. Okay, so I'm not done yet even though I've painted now everything in with gouache on top of my watercolor so my bun and my hot dog are done so what about toppings what goes on top right and then we're done because a uh, hot dog has four or few layers so um I have you have a ton of choices but what I like to do I'm peeling off my frisket is reach for then permanent materials to go on top because they're not going to mess up my layers underneath and I'm also not using anything that's too watery or crazy either. So what I decide to use, which actually ends up being a huge mistake, but you also learn by using is this weird puffy paint, but this is actually like a fine art puffy paint and it is filled with permanent acrylic paint inside. So part of the reason I know so much is just by trying things. You got to try them to really discover. So this ended up being like a hot mess express, but it ended up leading to something that was, I ended up looking actually super cool. And I very, at the end, very much managed to pull it all together. But it took a lot of experimenting and like, oh, shit moves in order to kind of like bring it all together, to be honest. Um, oh, look at my amazing hair cam. That's awesome, Karen. So yeah, so I used a brush to smooge it out, whatever. But at the end of the day, you can reach for your permanent art markers, the ones that are permanent, you can reach for those with confidence. So your Posca paint markers, your Sharpie paint pens, anything that's filled with really permanent ink is fair game. Ink or acrylic ink or acrylic paint is fair game when working with over watercolors and gouache. So I know this for a fact. Um, and so it, this was the perfect ending. There's me cleaning up my mistakes. Um, another awesome part about gouache is that because it's so reactive, that was gouache that I had rubbed off on my arm that got somewhere else in my paper. You can just take a wet paintbrush and literally lift it off. Like that's crazy town. You could never do that with acrylics. So, um, so yeah, let me add that to our hot dog page real quick. Okay, so for this project, the toppings is going to be acrylic paint pens. And the reason I'm putting the word acrylic or markers is that a lot there are paint pens that are filled with water soluble dye based inks that are also water reactive and that would not be a good choice for this project because they wouldn't actually have the opacity to cover over the dark gouache that I have down on my page. So, and not only that, but because they're so juicy and wet, they also run the risk of reactivating the layers underneath. So you want your toppings 
over materials like wash and watercolor. This is traditional gouache to make sure it's only permanent materials. Now there are there is something called acrylic gouache, which is permanent. So had I been using acrylic gouache, acrylic, <laughs> I can't talk. Acrylic gouache is really just acrylic paint that is matte, but they market it as gouache. But I'm using traditional gouache today, so I can only use uh, anything permanent on top. Right, Max? Maggie, you're so tired. Make sure you subscribe to uh, my channel, and I will be back next week with another awesome video focusing more on mixed media and watercolors and what to do and what not to do to make awesome projects. I'll see you in the next video.